Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so far, the debate about press regulation has been mainly about the nationals. Lord Fowler, former chairman of Midlands Independent Newspapers, wants the government to get on with implementing its plans for an independent regulator. But only last week it emerged they were being soft-pedalled while a rival scheme is considered for the industry to regulate itself. The irony is that although local papers didn't hack anyone's phones, press regulation could hit them hardest of all. As our Stoke political reporter Phil McCann explains. It's delivery time. The latest edition of Stoke-on-Trent's main daily local paper, The Sentinel, arrives at the newsagents. It's been serving the people of North Staffordshire since 1854. People believe that we fight their battles, uh, we campaign for them, and um, over the years uh, we have given them a voice. And if this paper didn't exist, they wouldn't have that voice. Despite their proud history, local newspapers have not escaped Leveson. They, along with the rest of the industry, have rejected his recommendations. Leveson should look at the national press in isolation and deal with the national press. They're the bad boys, we're not. The Leveson inquiry was set up after the phone hacking scandal, which took in the families of murder victims, as well as a host of celebrities and public figures. Good morning. Tom Watson was one of the leading figures in the battle to bring the press, and the Murdoch press in particular, to heel. Mr Murdoch, you must be the first Mafia boss in history who didn't know he was running a criminal enterprise. Mr Watson, please. I think that's inappropriate. Mr Chairman. Since Leveson, the government has come up with its own slightly watered-down proposals for the press, but for some, even that's too much. Almost everything that happened that actually led to the Leveson inquiry was a criminal act. It could have been covered by the criminal law. There is no need in a modern, internet, global world for a series of press regulations which look at national media. It just won't work and it is doomed to failure. But is it fair to treat the generally well-behaved local press in the same way as the red tops? If they're operating good practice, it won't be a burden. It'll simply be a benefit to them because the public will know they can trust the journalism they're producing. All this comes at a time when newspaper circulations have been plummeting. Over the last 10 years, the Sentinel circulation has nearly halved. Back in 2002, nearly 80,000 people bought the paper every day. Ten years later, that figure is down to just over 40,000, a drop of 45%. It's a figure that's typical of many local papers. At the moment, the main parties are in rough agreement that there need to be tough new rules, but the papers themselves are proposing their own rival regulator, leaving deadlock making the future for local papers look even more uncertain. Mm, and we'll uh, have more about Tom Watson later, incidentally. Uh, Phil McCann reporting there. And we're also joined today by the media <coughs> commentator and consultant Steve Dyson, former editor of the Birmingham Mail, spent more than 20 years in the regional newspaper industry. How serious is the threat this poses for local papers. Are they scaremongering a little bit about this, do you think? I don't think so, Patrick. Um, the local and regional press plays a crucial role in our society. They hold people to account at a very, very local level. They make sure that the public are listened to. They act as a watchdog. And yet, if the full um, le legislation and regulation happens as a result of Leveson, the potential cost is going to be catastrophic for local and regional press. They would be forced to pay the same sort of amounts as the national press. It could be a really dangerous thing to do. I mean, one of the things that it might, uh, it might endanger is the, the bravado, the, the bravery of the local press to stand up for the public. Are they going to do that if they're threatened with crippling costs? But, but surely if they've got nothing to hide, they've nothing to fear in a sense, as we heard from Hacked Off, it's a, a guarantee of proper journalistic conduct. Surely good newspapers will really go through this without any particular difficulty. Well, what the regional industry would say is why involve them at all then? At the moment, the regional industry and the local newspapers are very beholden to the Press Complaints Commission. It works very well. They take it very seriously and people are able to complain through that system and they get just um, desserts. You know, they, they, they are treated properly. Why involve the local press at all? Why can we not have a system where the local press still are looked after by something like the Press Complaints Commission? 
Richard Bowyer there, the editor of the Sentinel, says that, you know, they were the bad guys, the nationals, but it's the locals that are getting the brunt of it. There's a real sense of bitterness there in the industry, isn't there? Well, there really is. I mean, we ought to underline it, really. The, the things like uh, Millie Dowler and uh, Madeleine McCann and the very unjust way they were treated in the press had nothing to do with the regional and local newspapers. It was a national um, problem and they ought to deal with it at a national level. No Norman, a, a national problem being visited upon the locals. Doesn't Mick Temple, the professor there, have a point that, you know, in the internet age, you really can't lift out the papers and treat them artificially separately? And by the way, the criminal law would have caught most of this anyway. Well, I, I mean, I just don't accept that argument about criminal law would have, would have, would have taken it. What, what the criminal, what it has been evidenced in the Leveson inquiry has been the degree of corruption that there has been in some newspapers. I'll come, come to the point on regional press and local press, and I totally agree that uh, their standards are in many ways much higher. But the fact is that the government, any government, has got to do, deal with the scandal that there is at the moment. And the fact of the matter is that we've had something like uh, 40 uh, people are being charged, we've or got 100 arrests. I mean, that is what we're, that, that is what we are doing. And I, I don't think it can be just swept away. Look, just let me make one more yeah. point. I Very was a journalist, not just chairman of Middle Independent News. I started as a journalist. I didn't come, I came into journalism because I thought journalism was something about exposing wrongdoing. You're getting into serious trouble when you get to a position where it is the newspapers or some of the newspapers who are actually doing the wrongdoing. I, I think we can see, Peter, already here this, in this discussion, actually, how in a way the politicians are being pulled by public opinion, being pulled by the newspaper industry. How can you see a way through this? Well, I think we've got to implement Leveson. I hear what Steve Dyson says. You know, 40 years ago, we had a genuine local press. I was dead lucky. When I was elected uh, to represent West Bromwich East in 1974, there were two thriving newspapers. The, the Birmingham Evening Mail and the Wolverhampton Express and Star both had West Bromwich editions, Sandwell editions. Both had officers uh, in West Bromwich itself, had experienced journalists who knew, knew what they were talking about, knew what they were doing. The fact is, there are, there are, there are very few local papers anymore. They're all owned by big conglomerates. Uh, experienced journalists have been let go. Uh, younger and sometimes unqualified people on poor wages are employed. People have been made redundant on a monthly basis from the, from the regional press. And the crucial point is, n because of that, the regional press takes much of its news from what's happening in local newspapers. And some of the lies and some of the distortion and some of the corruption that Norman was talking about in the national papers has been reflected at local level too. That's why we need Leveson. What, what, what do you make of Mick Temple's other point, that you simply can't realistically, in the electronic age, take out the newspapers and regulate them separately from the rest of all the citizen journalism, micro-blogs and all the rest of it? Well, you've got, you have got systems. I mean, I agree that there is a, a problem on the internet and things of that kind. But you've already got systems for looking at complaints, for example, and standards. For example, the BBC has a very strict code of restriction and regulation and, and uh, impartiality and, and what can be done. I think, frankly, if the, posi the position is that the press proprietors, remember the NUJ, the National Union of Journalists, are in favour of Leveson. I mean, it's the proprietors um, who are against it. And frankly, the difference, and we won't go into it because, I mean, it'll send everyone boggle-eyed, uh, but the difference between uh, what the government and parliament is saying and what the press proprietors are saying is not fantastic. We're having, we're having a ridiculously big debate on a small amount of ground. One small final point, if you would, Steve. Peter raised the point about the role of local papers, thinking about local democracy, covering council meetings, a key part of accountability. There's a real concern in this, isn't there? There is, but uh, what I'd do, Patrick, is to compare local newspapers and national papers to local councillors and national MPs. Would you have a different set of regulation for MPs and councillors? No, you wouldn't, and you don't. Why should you have a separate regulator for the national? Um, what, I mean, why don't we have the same regulator for the national press and a different one for local press? Well, fascinating stuff, and I know we could go on all day with this, but I'm afraid that's where we have to draw a halt for today. But for the moment, thank you. Particular thanks to you, Steve, for being with us here today. And, uh, by the way, the new editor of the Shropshire Star, Martin Wright, is due in the hot seat on BBC Radio Shropshire. How will he deal with falling circulations and uphold journalistic ethics in the wake of Leveson? Find out on Wednesday morning from 10.